ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm David Marsland and this is The Leader Weekends. Every Saturday we bring you a bonus episode of our business podcast, How to Be a CEO. This is a cut-down version, so hit the link in the show notes to hear the full thing or search your podcast provider for How to Be a CEO. There are new episodes every Monday morning. Levi Root's success on Dragon's Den is legendary and he speaks about it like it's a tale from mythical times. When he got home that night, he says he held the guitar he'd used in his pitch aloft and told his mum, I slayed the dragon. And he has been on a real hero's journey, his breakthrough coming at 48 years old when he had to borrow money just to get to the BBC studios. I left my flat that morning to go to Dragon's Den, unable to pay the taxi fare. I lived in Brixton. Dragon's Den was being filmed in London Bridge. So there, it was only about like a £12 journey in a taxi to, to get there. I couldn't even afford that. That was 2007. But the business was such a huge success, we're still talking about it now. That's what I mean by legendary. The Levi Roots brand has long expanded from reggae reggae sauce to include ranges and drinks, snacks, ice cream. Back then, investors Peter Jones and Richard Farley gave him £50,000 and took 40% of the equity. Levi still built up a fortune of an estimated £30 million. It's the stuff of movies. No, it really is. They're looking at two players from in Top Boy. Ah. And, and they're looking at also somebody else that was in Star Wars. I can't believe it, but it is true and I can't wait to announce um, the director, which is the next um, thing we're going to announce um, pretty soon. I'm David Marlson from the Evening Standard. Levi will be appearing at our SME Expo in April, where he'll be talking about the power of a great brand. You can get free tickets by popping over to smexpo.co.uk. And he really is a great brand, a brilliant success story. But when we meet him, I wonder, given where he came from to get where he's got, did he ever worry it would all fall apart? Yeah, I suppose it's that fear is the, is the biggest driver for me. I, I, I know this is not just about me. My moment in the den, I knew this express Caribbean food and Caribbean cuisine in a massive way that I haven't in my own lifetime, I haven't seen that. So I, I know how people feel about this. So if this fails, I, I know I, I can wheel up and come again, as we say in music, you know, and pull up the tune and start again, because I, I feel I'm capable of that. But I, I think if, if this fails, it would be massive for Caribbean food. And, and that's my greatest fear. And in some ways, that's one of the reasons why I, I work so hard on it. That's interesting, because we have shelves and shelves in those major supermarkets of reggae, reggae sauce, and all the other varieties. And when you see that, do you feel you're representing the Afro-Caribbean cause here? Yeah, absolutely. You know, that, that's, that's the drive. You know, I do think one has to have a purpose um, when you're on a journey. And my purpose, as I said, is not just about me and my family. You know, this is about Caribbean cuisine. This is for the, the you know, for Caribbean people, for them, this was unreachable. And, and now it's there. And I'm, I'm really proud that my name is up there with it as well, too. But I, I think it is the work of the people who have actually gone out and, and, and tried the product, you know, before trusting it. That's the first thing. And then you get on to trusting it and, and, and you buy it after that. Was there a point when you realized you had a powerful brand? And when did you realize you might have a powerful brand? I suppose it's, it's the moment when failure hits you, you know, and, and you have to swallow failure. You know, as failure was like a gob trying to come up, up out, of my, out of my throat. Um, whereas I was always trying to sell the sauce amongst my community. In You know, I thought it would be great. And I thought, great idea. You know, I've got the sauce. Perfect. I live in a Caribbean area. Brilliant. I'm going to have a great market. It. But it actually failed. <laughs> it really did because people are saying that, look, we make our own sauce, Levi. Where the hell are you going with that? You know, and we probably can make it better than, better than yours because we're all Caribbean. But I, I didn't really bank on that when I started that my marketing thing. But it's the rejection of, 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 of that that led me to think that, well, I know the sauce was good because when I sell it at the carnival, you know, for years and years, everyone loves it. It was actually mainstream people were coming to my stall 
at the carnival, because that's what carnival yeah. is, people from everywhere that comes. It's not particularly Caribbean people that, that comes to carnival. So when I when I recognized that, I thought, well, if the sauce is good enough, maybe I need to find my market and, and not rely upon my local one. So I decided to go into the shires with it, you know, and, and you know, me and a couple of mates of mine, every weekend we would just mop out, you know, the, the next sort of lovely country market site that was going in the shires and we would turn up as the only black rasta man with a guitar and, and Caribbean sauce selling and for a long while we did that and it was while we were you know getting this magnificent attention from a mainstream market we didn't particularly know mm. Caribbean food but to see someone in a lovely country lane in the Shires singing with a guitar and selling a Caribbean sauce for them it was it was something that more than it was just more than the sauce and that's when I realized in that they were relying upon Levi Roots bringing the sauce and not yeah. just somebody standing there and selling it. And to answer your question, that was the moment when I thought that, yes, this is it. I have got to write this song, which at that time, it wasn't really written. It was just a couple of verses I had, you know, to sort of sing along while I was selling the sauce. I call it the tour of the Shires we were doing <laughs> for about a year. And it was while doing that and merging the music with the food and see how they loved my singing, playing, singing about the sauce and song that I realized it was a eureka moment. And I needed to merge the two together and make them one. Unlike Levi, we haven't got any money. So here's some generic reggae because we can't afford Bob Marley. Listening to the ads instead of skipping them might help us with that. And so would hitting the follow button on your podcast provider. That tells us places like Apple and Spotify that someone thinks this is a show worth listening to. So they suggest it to others and we get bigger audiences. And if you've got idle hands right now, go have a look at the SME Expo lineup at smexpo.co.uk. It's being held at the XL London on April 25th and 26th. Tickets are free. So was that Dragon's Den experience an overnight life-changing event? Yeah, it was. I mean, I I left my flat that morning to go to Dragon's Den, unable to pay the taxi fare to get to the Dragon's Den. And I lived in Brixton. Dragon's Den was being filmed in London Bridge at the time, 2007. So there, it was only about like a 12 pounds journey in a taxi to, to get there. I couldn't even afford that. It, it was that bad. I absolutely spent everything in my dream of saying this, this my opportunity had come. Everybody had said to me, Levi, don't take the guitar, don't go on Dragon's Den. If you go with the guitar, you're gonna get slayed. Nobody had ever sung. It was just a complete week, maybe about two weeks of the time when I was spotted until when I got onto Dragon's Den. So it was two weeks of complete negativity from everyone. When I was adamant that I want to sing, I want to take my guitar, I want to do something different. I feel better when I'm me. I don't want to go when I'm pretended. I say, no, Levi, you, you're crazy. You're going to get slaughtered by Peter Jones. And I'm like, who the hell is Peter Jones? I've never seen Dragon's Den, never watched it. <laughs> trying to stay away from my kids, trying to show me what, it, you know, what it's like. If I go as me, and I'm comfortable with my guitar, but like my, like a, like your comfy blanket um, that makes you you and makes you comfortable. Then, then you can be you, and and that's what I did. I I went as me, and um, the proudest moment is coming back home, um, in a taxi um, sent by the BBC because um, I didn't know I was gonna get bloody home <laughs> after after the day because I didn't I didn't have a return plan to get. <laughs> but I think one of the magical thing was I remember getting that taxi by the BBC to send me home after slaying the dragons and doing the most amazing um, thing ever, you know, and going home and um, I. I phone my mom in in the taxi, um, and and tell her that mom, you know, I'm the dragon slayer. That's what I said, and it was the most happiest thing for me to be able to do that. She was just so over the moon. You, I think it can only be a good thing. It sounds like the kind of story you see in the movies, doesn't it, Levi? And it is. Or is going to be? Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely amazing. I'm, I'm glad you touched on that. As you can see, the smile on my face just widens like nicely when you said that. So I can have a chance to mention, yeah, because it is again one of these fantastic dreams that when I do hover above myself and say, "What a jammy bastard!" You know, you down there. 
<laughs> that something <laughs> else is, is happening that a, a movie has been made about this brilliant journey um, that, that, that we're in and it's just so fantastic so you know some amazing producers you know named one it's just so great and I can't believe it but it is true and I can't wait to announce um, the director which is the next um, thing we're going to announce um, pretty soon What's really important though and what everybody wants to know who will play Levi Roots. I was sent a list of, I can't say all, I was sent a list because there is a list of, of, of players that looks, I was really inspired by, by ones. And I can name that they're, they're looking at two players from in Top Boy. Ah. I feel like I'm not going to really say no name of the one, like two characters in, in Top Boy. And, and they're looking at um, also somebody else that was in Star Wars. Oh, like we yeah. all know who so, that is. Just at an early stage and the thoughts of what may be okay with the thing. So, we yeah, it's not the guy who played Lando Carlisian, yeah. is it? Yeah. It's not yeah, that Star Wars guy. Any one of those three, any one of those three <laughs> to play me. Yeah. There would have to be some nice dreadlocks wig, wig though. And of course, the other question is. Who is Peter? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I know he probably want to play, play himself up, Peter. <laughs> well, yeah, well, that'd be an interesting one. Yeah, that'd be an interesting one, yeah. And just finally, you're going to be appearing at the Evening Standards SME Expo. Will the guitar be coming too? Yeah, as I said, you know, my music is my art and soul. And if I'm being the truly viral, which, which I want to bring to the public for an expo, then I have to come with my A game. And that in, includes my, my wonderful guitar, which her name is Miriam, by the way. Um, so I'll be walking with Miriam. That was Levi Roots. For more business interviews, news and analysis, go to standard.co.uk forward slash business or pick up the Evening Standard newspaper. How to be a CEO is back on Monday morning. I'd love to see you then. <laughs>